Here are the top 10 basketball sneakers of 2023 according to weartesters.com. Oh, and we're going to give our opinion on their opinions. Andrew, you got a narrow foot. I got a very wide foot. Let's talk about it. Andrew, first off, we got the Harden 7. Mm. Agree? Disagree? Of course, me and you, we are not that into Adidas generally. I heard this shoe was incredibly comfortable. I tried it on. However, I will say this. Light strike in the front for me is not enough cushioning. Listen, man, from a narrative standpoint, James Harden is only putting up 16, 4, and 8. The Clippers do look like they have a better flow. But if he was not putting up MVP numbers, this shoe is not going to be selling that well. I have not seen anybody buy it in person. Maybe there are people at your gym who have it. I personally have not. I don't think a lot of people are buying it, even if it's a pretty good shoe. Interestingly enough, I do think this is the best Adidas shoe out right now because Trey's line, er, mm. Dame's line, er. Yeah, I was hoping for Adidas to come back to glory ever since like the Harden 3, which I loved. Right, Donovan Mitchell's line, er. Andrew, can Anthony Edwards, do you like the AE1 real quick? They, they look interesting. They do right. look interesting. Moving on, Andrew, the KD16. Wow. This is actually the highest rank that wear testers gave any shoe this year. The KD line, man, always good. And even though, man, David, why do you think this shoe was actually slept on, though? All right, this shoe is slept on because you don't see as many people buy it as the KD13 or the 14. The 15, I don't think people really liked it because of the heel slip. I don't see as many people wear the KD16 uh, right now, but in the NBA, a ton of people are wearing it. And you know why I think that is? Mm. Because they sort of made the KD this year, Andrew, a little bit more for like a medium body type. Whereas pr prior, I believe 12, 13, 14 were more for skinnier bodies such as yourself. Because this year, Andrew, I had the KD-16. Yeah. And you went away from it. Yes. Um, do you feel like the, the way that they buffed it up, like with the heavier cushioning setup, made it unideal for your skinny body type? Uh, possibly. I think that you can, even if you have a narrow foot it will still do really well but it's not necessarily like the glove like fit that it used to be at least for me because right, it's wider it's yeah. wider now also i felt like the hue the toe ratio was like i felt like almost a dip in the back anyways you know 9.5 you can't beat that score oh uh, you know what i noticed is some people they all agree the kd16 is a really good all-arounder but some people say it's like 7.5 all around but other people said it was 9.5 all around mm. but everybody agreed it was pretty much an all-around shoe all right david let's talk about this next shoe this was the hottest woman's shoe of all time easily the, hot the, this is the hottest women's basketball shoe in history the sabrina one i actually got to try these on because i was considering buying them in a woman's size. I think it was, it was going to be 11 and a half. And a lot of men bought these in women's yeah, sizes. Yeah, a lot. Of, I seen guys hooping these and I wanted to like them. And I actually do think I would have liked them, but the arch support is too high because it's scientifically speaking, on average, women have a higher arch than men do. They also have a uh, shorter ankle length and a narrower instep. So if you make it more for the woman's foot, it will fit a lot of guys, but not every guy's. And I have a flat foot, so I couldn't wear them. I know that the midfoot is very narrow on these, mm. like you said, to accommodate more of a female foot shape. I will say this. this You could argue that this is the best-looking signature shoe in a really, really long Dude, time. I, it almost looks like they took the best... Kobe throw away and like Kyrie throw away and like mix it together. I wanted to buy them, man. I really did want to get them for 120. That was a steal, man, for a guy shoe because guy shoes are expensive. Um, Moving on, Andrew, the Zoom Freak 5. I, I think that this is a really weird shoe because it's like it's like an uglier KD 13. Mm. And, and uh, the setup is essentially the same minus the heel zoom as yeah. a KD 13. Yeah, it, it looked a lot like a KD 13 too. Um, I would say, you know, I haven't tried these on, but... I do know a lot of like forward shaped guys like, you know, the guys who are kind of maybe wider or medium length feet, a little on the heavier side. They like these people who would maybe play like Giannis. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's uh, they're sticking with the big swoosh. And I think that's a cool kind of like signature for Giannis. I, I think that the reason why the sales of the Zoom Freak 5 were hurt was because they uh, launched with that really ugly Gucci colorway that was sort of like a Milwaukee Bucks like yeah. throwback. Also, colorway. Also I, just, I was like, this was a horrible colorway to lead with. Also, the design, it's simple and cool, but it's like. It's too simple. Does it like, not? There's just nothing there. Does it not look like a takedown KD13? Like a cheaper Some, version? Something like that. Uh, moving on, Andrew, to the Curry 11. Some people, they will die by this line of shoes yeah. with the Flotro outsole. 
I personally have never really enjoyed it myself, but I do know that there, there's some people, they only want to wear Curry's. Man, I'm not going to lie. The people that I've seen wear this, the Curry 11 or the Curry 10, <coughs> um, I see, see more people still rocking the Curry 10s. They like to shoot. Yeah. They do like to play like Curry. Like, I've never seen anybody do some crazy oh. high-flying drives in them. I, these guys are all shooters. Set shooters, too, specifically. Yeah. Even De'Aaron Fox kind of sometimes is a set shooter from yeah, deep, yeah, at yeah. least. So it goes to show you, I mean, you know, like I said, I guess they changed the enter the flow outsole. They said it was dual density. Mm. But I just really, really doubt that that has a lot of bounce back, in my opinion. Moving on, Andrew, this... Your shoe right here. Here's a bunch of clips of you shooting in them, hitting a, what, a game winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, against the toughest comp that, you know, anybody's ever seen. But uh, LeBr Nike LeBron 21. Nike LeBron 21, man. Um, how, for how me, you... I liked it overall better than the LeBron 20. But but there was this weird side-to-side weird -side slippage for my foot. So I felt like the lockdown in the forefoot wasn't as good as the 20s, but overall, I like the feel. They're super comfy out of the box. There is no break in time needed. There is more security around the ankle and the heel um, and stuff like that, which I enjoy. It's a little bit higher. It's a little bit more of a mid. So you're saying the LeBron 20 did take uh, a lot more break in time? Yes, for sure. The LeBron 20s need break in while the LeBron 21s do not. And so I would say... I want to get the LeBron 21s in a different colorway, not the black ones, because I think the black ones might stretch more. Okay, moving on, Andrew, the Nike GT Chump 2. Um, this is crazy that I actually do not have this shoe yet because I tried it on at the store and the forefoot was like a little bit too tight for me. And then I needed to go get the EP pairs. Mm. But lately, Andrew, in our uh, building gym, they started having so much pickleball on it. The gym has gotten so dusty that a lot of the EP pairs got me slipping around because of the harder... XDR rubber. Mm, so now it's issue. like it, it's like really causing an issue for me to buy certain EP shoes because they have the harder rubber designed for China's outdoor courts, and now I'm slipping around on my indoor courts. Wow. Struggles um, of an EP buyer. But yeah, I think that, you know, the Nike GT Jump 2, I'm looking forward to it because it has double stacked Zoom Air in the front. Mm. Ultimately, that's going to provide you a ton of bounce know. back. Wear testers are very reputable, man. They gave them 9 out of 10, and honestly, these shoes look mad clunky. Like, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I heard they have, like, a mini Eclipse plate in them, too. Uh, Eclipse plates, they really give you that, like, spring back effect. Uh, the spring back effect doesn't only come from the cushioning. Mm. It can come a lot from that uh, shank plate, whether that's TPU or carbon fiber. Moving on, Andrew, we got the Puma MB03. Are you excited by it, disappointed by it? Because it's essentially the third year, and they have not switched up LaMelo's line at all. Man, what do you think they're thinking about not switching up the design? They're like, I'd, they're like, listen, we found a good thing. We don't want to mess with it. Yeah, I think that Puma has made the LaMelo line essentially their hyper dunk, where it's, it's a mid-cut. It pretty much fits everybody. It's for, like, heavier guards. From what I heard, LaMelo, he likes, like, a little bit more forward style shoes, even though, because he's he's just a big guard himself, mm -hmm. which is like 6'6". Six, six. So I'm saying that uh, it's kind of like their catch-all mid-top. Mm, okay. So I guess I guess they feel like if it's not broke, don't fix it. And yeah. plus, I'll tell you this, they probably sell a ton of them. Dude, I would love a pair of, uh, of the Puma MBO3s. Um, moving on, Puma All Nitro Pro, All Pro Nitro. This was uh, Scoot Henderson's debut colorway before Scoot got his own shoe, even though Scoot, I'm not going to lie, he's not playing as well as I thought he was going to play. Um, what do you think? What do you think about all Puma shoes, like, kind of being the same? Kind of a simple design. I think they want to keep it simple, and they want to sign the young players that can help make the brand, and then I'm sure they'll probably put in more money over the years into R&D and design. Um, right, because the tooling is incredibly simple, right? Yeah, literally, I'm surprised it's literally they got 8.5. That's pretty good, man. I mean, I, I, dude, if a shoe gets an 8.5 out of 10 on wear testers, if you can find it on sale, like 20, anywhere from 20% off and more, think about buying them. They do do their research. Of course, everybody's foots uh, and their tastes are a little bit different, but generally there is a general direction and uh, agreed sort of like rating on shoes. The Puma Stewie 2, Andrew, another female shoe. Mm, Brianna and, Stewart. Yeah, and they gave that a nine. But I feel like, yeah, like I said, Pumas, they're all about like 7.5 out of 10 on everything. Right, Like, right, you know right. what I mean? And then maybe with the LaMelo having uh, better ankle support. Moving on to honorable mentions, Andrew, they got the Jordan 38. 
Mm, how do you feel about this one? You're a huge fan of the Jordan line. Yeah, you? I mean, uh, I tried them on. I'm going to get them, but I've just been waiting for the Nike store to get them because I know that they actually, uh, like, the sole falls apart. Mm. Due to some sort of, like, X-plate design that they have, the sole really disconnects from the upper of the shoe. And uh, that is unfortunate because if you're going to charge 200 retail for a sneaker, I mean... You know, that's just something that you shouldn't have happen. Uh, a ton of people are still wearing the LeBron 20 in the NBA, Andrew. As Dude. much as the LeBron 21 is popular no, as well. No, no, no. If you can get them for 140 or 130, guys, I think the LeBron 20 is a steal. Technology-wise, they will take a few games to break into, but definitely get them. One game for your life. Broken in LeBron 20s or are you going with the 21s? Broken in LeBron 20. So. Oh! I, but I got to try. I've, I got to try more LeBron 21s. Uh, Way of Wade All City V2. This has become a really, really popular series. Uh, you know, the Way of Wade series from Way of Wade All City 10 to 11 to 11 V2 to now All City uh, 12. I don't uh, know. I just people really like it. Um, I think it's almost like a takedown, like WoW 10. Because, like, the WoW 10s are too expensive, and I think that carbon fiber champ plate's, like, a little too strong for some people. Um, Nike Air Max Impact 4 coming in as the number one best budget shoe of the year. Wow. What, what do you think about people going to, you know, the big five, the guard sports, the dick sporting good shoes? Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. But should people just go get signature shoes on sale, or is it okay to go get you know, the Air Max Impact 4 is right you off get the Get the Air Max Impact 4 if you identify with the Air Max Impact 4, man. But it's true. Some people don't feel comfortable wearing signature shoes, right? Yeah. Um, Way of Wade 10, the best basketball shoes for wide feet. I don't even know if I fully agree with this one, to be honest, because I feel like it's kind of thin in the midfoot. Uh, but it's yeah, like I said, they got a wide forefoot. Everybody's foot is wide in a different way. I got a wide midfoot and a wide forefoot. But interestingly enough, my toes don't stick out. Some people, they got like a thinner forefoot than me, but their toe might stick out. Yeah, and imagine if you had that bone sticking out, kind of like a bunion. That makes things very complicated. Some people only have that additional bone uh, dorsal fin on their like left foot. Mm. So that complicates things as well. And we're talking about the best traction, the serious player, only player one. Mm. Do they need to send you some shoes, man? Man, I really wanted to try these on, man. They look like... Remind me of my favorite Kobe's that I had. But uh the Kobe 8s, right? I mean, I guess what do you think of this shoe? It's kind of controversial because some people are saying, all right, this is a Chinese shoe brand. They completely ripped off the Kobe 8, Kobe 10, Kobe 11 for their design. But then it's also like they're giving people what they want. Like Nike's not retroing those, but like and pro-troing them. I mean, if it's a good shoe, let the market speak, let the players speak, right? Yes, 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 I agree. Uh, they said the LeBron 21 was the best for flat feet. I think it is good for flat feet. I would say so. I, I agree with this take for sure. Right, because you're saying it's comfortable for flat feet, fallen arches right out of the box. Yeah. How important is that? Some people can deal with, you know, like a painful play-in time to warm up a shoe. Some people can't deal with it. I don't know if the arch ever wears in, though. Is that is that how it works? I don't think so. I think if the arch hurts you in the beginning, it's not good. It's That's not good true. for you. My Jordan 35s tore my foot up so bad one time, I literally was like paralyzed for like 20 minutes afterwards. They said the MBO3 had the best ankle support. They considered the LeBron 21 a low top. I don't even know if I agree with that. The best high top shoes is the uh, GT Jump 2. Most comfortable shoes was the 21. Now we're kind of just getting into your ultra Wait, expensive how, how shoes. How the LeBron 21 only got a 9 out of 10, but they it keeps ranking as most comfortable, best shoe Flat foot, it's the low top, most yeah. comfortable. How come it only got 9 out of 10? You know, sometimes it just depends on who was delivering the ratings, I guess. Because, uh, to be honest, I think the 9.5 for the KD16 is a little high, even though I really like that shoe, and I think that's probably one of the most slept-on shoes of the year. Best value basketball shoes, New Balance 2-Way V4. Jamal Murray, Zach Levine, everybody's wearing it. Mm. Um, you know, I got to get a wide pair in the neon colorway. They still had the Kyrie Infinity on the best cheap shoes, Andrew. This... The Kyrie Infinity still is good. still the shoe you see the most often. Still good. On a pickup court because, they, you know, obviously after the whole controversy. They're on sale. I mean, 70 bucks. Yeah. 70. Get them. They also had the Anta Shockwave 5, the shoe that they gave Kyrie. They had already had it designed, but then they gave the Shockwave 5 to Kyrie as well as the Shockwave 5 Pro, which, by the way, guys, is incredibly good looking. Um, anyway, just to address some major questions, Andrew, that uh, they didn't have in there. What do you think about 
Grinches last year, right, or two years ago, and now it's reverse Grinches this year. People are ins- insanely in love with the Pro Tro 6. Yeah. Uh, how come you haven't, uh, you know, sprung the money and got them? The, the, the you- Pro Tro 6, I mean, they're super expensive, man. Right. They're hyper expensive. I don't know if I need them. Like, I did have Kobe's back in the day, and if there was a way for me to get Kobe's for under, like, 180 bucks. Do, do you feel like with the ability to get LeBron 20s and 20, 21s, you don't need to get Kobe 6s? I don't know. I, I haven't actually played in the Kobe 6s. I just know that they are amazing shoes. Right. Would you get the Kobe 6 reps that Nike this year has just announced that they're starting to go after people making no, the reps? No, because that's wrong. I would never get them. Right. Even though they have full length zoom. I would never get the Kobe reps. Um, Nike. Moving on to the KT line, Andrew. I think the KT line is slept on, the KT9. But it's just like people don't want to wear clay shoes, to be honest, in America. Zion. Zion has a new shoe out right now, Andrew, that a lot of people say plays like a Kobe. And they're coming out with a Zion 3 strength version that has full length zoom. And people have said that it's going to play like a Kobe 11 with the ID full length zoom insole. So that would Wait, be- I, yo, how come the GT Hustle pop up here at 8 out of 10? And they say this is one of the best guard shoes of the year, but it wasn't on their list. Listen, so what's so good with the GT Hustle 2? Are they good You know, or not? the GT Hustle 2 was supposed to be Wembenyama shoe. Mm. But Wembenyama has been sticking with uh, the GT Run 1. David, are, An- are Anta Shockwave 5s going to sell? Uh, it's going to be tough because they don't really have widespread American distribution right now. But I think that that Shockwave 5 Pro is one of the best looking sneakers of the year. Um, okay. I'll, be inter- I'll be interested to see how his uh, full signature looks. Um, right right you got, now, Dave, David, you got to buy a shoe off this list right now. Right now? Yes, you have to spend the money. <sighs> Probably the GT Jump 2. Okay. Just because I had the GT Jump 1, but it was kind of messing with my Achilles a little bit. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I-, I want the boost effect. However, I will say this. My favorite 3.6 uh, brand right now that is trending upwards and it was funny because this is not even considered a top tier Chinese brand. It's considered a second tier Chinese brand. Is three six one? Guess who they just signed? Who reigning best player in the NBA? Nikola Jokic. Wow. He's going to be wearing the three six one future. They got Aaron Gordon with the AG four, and uh, right now I'm wearing the three six one big uh, big three pro, which is worn by uh, Kentavious Caldwell Pope. Mm. Um. Ultimately, Andrew. What do you think is the hope for Adidas? Donovan Mitchell's line is down. Trey Young's line is down. A lot of people do not feel Dame's line anymore. Anthony Harden, Edwards. Yeah. Anthony Edwards. I think Harden's. Uh, I think Harden's kind of fame has peaked. You know, but he's, he's still selling in China. He's still selling in China, which is good. But I think Anthony Edwards is the next hope for Adidas. That's. Um, I just hope the shoes are good. I haven't tried them on. I do want to try them on. Do you think the Jaw series is going to be impacted by all this uh, negative press? I mean, it sold pretty well, the Jaw one. Jaw can still be the face of the league, actually. Or at least top two faces of the league. He actually still can be if he doesn't have any other off-court issues. Right, because he's so exciting. He's small. The kids want to play like him. Dude, if he cleans it up, he could be top two, top three faces in the league, and he's going to sell. Yeah. And those shoes are affordable. They look good. They're low profile. He could still do it, but he's got one more chance, I think. What do you think about this other guy who could potentially be the face of the league right now, Andrew? Uh, Jason Tatum. He got the JT1. That just launched with Jordan Brand. He got his own signature. D-Book shoe is coming out. D-Book 1. Luke is on number two. So these are all the new young faces of the league, and they're all on the, their first or second I signature. I actually think none of them will sell as much as Ja Morant. If we're all comparing them at the same time. Okay. Hey, Josh still got it, man. We're rooting for you. Anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think was the sneaker of the year. For me, my ultimate pick, Andrew, KD 16. All right. Listen, you look, look how many players are wearing it. LeBron 21. Let's go. All right, everybody. Let us know in the comments down below. Hopefully this list was helpful. And uh, let us know which basketball shoe you guys want to buy. Again, if you can find any of these shoes for on sale for 25% off, 20% off, I think it's worth it, honestly. And remember, guys, if you are a wide footer, get a shoe that fits a wide footer. If you're a narrow footer, get a shoe that fits a narrow footer. It's just going to make your life easier. Otherwise, you're going to be doubling, tripling up on socks, insoles, all that type of stuff. Uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.